I'm now coming up on Brennan's, one of the five oldest restaurants in New Orleans. It serves classic Creole food. It was recently taken over by Ralph Brennan, a cousin to the original Brennan's family. He's, uh, he's made the me menu a little bit modern and everything plated is a much more modern style than it used to be. Brennan's restaurant has a checkered history. It was the subject of a lot of litigation between the Brennan family and wound up in bankruptcy when Ralph wound up taking it over. He did a good job with it, otherwise we would have lost a New Orleans institution. Tonight we're at Brennan's, one of the five oldest restaurants in New Orleans. The others being Antoine's, Arnaud's, and uh, Galatra's, and then we don't know the other one. So, what the heck, we're still at one of the five. We decided to go to Brennan's because David wanted to get a really nice dinner that night. And so I figured, well, Brennan's is a classic old restaurant. They have great Creole style food. They've been around forever and people generally like it. So we decided to go. Of course, the first thing we had to do was to start with a nice cocktail. I decided to go with a Sazerac, which is a classic New Orleans cocktail invented there in New Orleans. Just for James, I ordered a Sazerac. You know, I haven't had a Sazerac since I've been here in New Orleans, and it is a classic New Orleans drink. It's a nice little pink and orange color. And I am now going to taste it. Oh, that's nice. You know, that's actually a smoother Sazerac than I've had before. You taste the whiskey, but it, you don't have that ultra strong licorice flavor that you get with a lot of them. This is a good Sazerac. They have soft bread. It looks like it's very buttery that they bring to the table, and I would guess it's slightly sweet. Um, but I'm thinking this is going to be a nice little treat. I had to squeeze the bread. I guess it's a little pornographic, but I had to do it anyway. Okay, a nice Sazerac, a good fluffy piece of bread, good start to the meal. I got a savory rice pudding with black truffle shaved on it. It looks really good. It's got some flowers. It's got the popcorn rice, the New Orleans popcorn rice, which has a sort of a popcorny flavor. And uh, that's gonna be a really nice dish. David got the gumbo. You're in New Orleans, you gotta get gumbo. See, I'm taking a look at it. It looks like it's got shrimp in it. It's got some of the rice on top. And then that could be tarragon on top of it. Now this rice pudding has edible flowers in it. It's got something that looks like some kind of a pasta in with the rice. And of course pieces of truffle everywhere. <laughs> mm. You gotta like truffle, but it's got a good strong truffle flavor. The fun thing about this restaurant is it has a classic New Orleans vibe. It has sort of that elegance that's understated and very southern, very New Orleans style. It's got a beautiful courtyard outside. It was raining when we walked in and it was soaking wet, but now the rain stopped and it's just very pretty. David ordered the black and red fish sort of a modern design. No, it's great. I got the ribeye steak, done perfect medium rare with a nice little mushroom sauce on it. Should be interesting. Mm. Perfectly tender, very juicy, very steaky. The sauce complements it really well. It comes with some sauteed mushrooms and onions on the side. Nice meal. Now here's one of the things I didn't notice, and I'm just noticing now when I ate it. This greenery on the side, this is bok choy. You don't usually get that in American restaurants, but this was very good. 
Okay, so one of the main reasons to come to Brennan's is for their bananas foster. They invented it here. It's basically bananas sautéed in butter with some brown sugar, rum, banana liqueur, a little bit of cinnamon, and then served over ice cream. They make it tableside here. The recipe was invented one year when New Orleans had an excess of bananas at the docks. And so the owner of Brennan's bought out all the bananas and went to his head chef and said, make me something using those bananas. So the guy came up with Bananas Foster. It's been famous ever since. Everybody makes Bananas Foster at Brennan's. Uh, everybody who comes to Brennan's knows this is what you get for dessert. And it's the main reason we came here tonight. So we're getting it now. And there it goes. And by the way, they set it on fire once uh, they get all the liquor in it. I've had many different bananas foster. They do a lot of variations on it. You'll see people put orange peel in it or lemon peel. They'll see people using nutmeg. I think the original is probably the best. Yeah, everybody tries to, to make variations, just not the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Right, that's, that's my feeling. Sometimes, you know, you get a little too complicated, you get a little too fancy, it's not really any better. Uh huh. So I didn't know if you heard that, but basically he was saying that they've stopped using cinnamon in their bananas foster because when they set it on fire, the cinnamon particles will go into the air and it wound up in the air conditioning ducts and clogged up some of the air conditioning. So now they don't do that and they don't have to deal with that problem. Okay, he's got to make sure the coast is clear before he sets the whole place on fire. There we go. Hooray! When I was a kid, my dad used to make a dish he called Bananas Flambeau. Banana well, the place didn't burn down. And in the end, we had a very nice dinner at one of the grand dames of New Orleans cooking. Brennan's is a place you probably shouldn't miss if you're only going to New Orleans one time. I had been going many times and I'd never been there. I was glad I went this time. And I'll probably come back, if nothing else, for the Bananas Foster.